I'm going to turn this rock into a very sharp knife. Now that is paper thin. Why use a material that's extremely hard to work with? Because I'm on a quest to find out which material makes the best knife. I've tried everything from obsidian to superconductor and had results ranging from awesome to awful. So next on my hit list is rock. Depending on which kind of rock you have, it can be really hard, which should turn into a knife that's really sharp. However, it's not easy to work with like metal is, but if I can source the best rocks, learn the best techniques on working with them, and utilize the most advanced sharpening tools available to man, I think my rock knife may just stand a chance against our previous contenders. First things first, I need a rock, but not just any rock. I need to find some granite, because just like every mom designing a home in 2011, I like the way granite looks. Also, I think it will have some properties that will work well for knives. It's really hard and relatively durable. That's what your mom said about it. That's what makes it so popular for countertops and is exactly why I want it for my knife. Softer rocks simply couldn't hold an edge. So anyways, I walked far and wide to find some granite. I wasn't having any luck at first. Then I remembered there's an entire mountain made of granite right here in Salt Lake City. This place is loaded with granite. It's all over the mountainside. That whole mountain is granite. That means this is the place. But we need something a little smaller because I can't lift this up, try as I might. <laughs> While I was there, I grabbed another rock that looked cool and I decided to make another knife out of that. Not exactly what we're looking for, but I think we could still make a knife out of this and it would look really cool. And it's still a rock, so let's make two knives. Now that I have the rocks, I need to get them into somewhat of a knife shape. For that, we'll use our 60,000 PSI water jet. This giant machine can cut basically anything into basically any shape. You just need to draw your design in AutoCAD and it gets right to work cutting whatever weird shape you want into your material. However, this project is a little more challenging than your average water jet cutting. I'll explain more of that as it happens. All right, here's the idea. We take the granite. I like this outline here, so maybe that could be the top of the knife. So we cut a line here, boom, another line here, bam. That gives us a little slice. We cut out the knife shape, bada ba boom, pow. Now for this pink rock, somebody tell me what this is in the comments. Similar process. I might cut it in half first just to make my life easier. I like this for the top of the knife. So then we boom, bam, and then cut the knife shape out. The difficult part is figuring out how to mount these rocks at just the right angle for making a knife. If you ask a real knife maker, they'll tell you the angle of the blade needs to be within a small window for it to be an actually good knife. This sounds easy because our water jet has a 5 axis head that can be set to a precise angle, but keep in mind I can't see exactly where the jet will be cutting unless it's blasting water, and I'm not getting anywhere near this thing while it's on. So basically, I have to spend a few hours trying to get the rock lined up at exactly the right angle for the sideways motion of the jet and the cutting angle of the jet. Otherwise, this knife isn't going to be much of a cutting instrument. Ready, Nate? I would have expected nothing less. Look at that. That is gonna make for a beautiful knife. And I mean B-E-A-U-tiful. Oh, all right. We got ourselves a slab, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's see what that looks like. Ooh. Looks like a nice pork chop. Man, all this cutting's really got me hungry. Nate, could you pass me the chops? Come on, Nate, I'm hungry. Oh, yeah, here you go. Ah, oh, thanks. Um. Anyways, I got bored of trying to line up the rock just right, so I decided to take a little break by working on the handles instead. Some might say I have ADHD. I say I'm optimizing my life for better retention. I started with a block of two different types of wood because I want these knives to be the same general shape, but look completely different. Just like, uh, just like... Alright, I can't think of a joke for that. Maybe you guys can fill in for me in the comments this time. Kind of like how our sponsor can fill your belly. Chomps is the perfect snack. It has healthy ingredients that you can actually pronounce and 10 to 12 grams of protein per stick. And it has no sugar, it's healthy. Actually, while I was filming this knife video at the shop, I got real hungry because I was there for like 12 hours. And luckily I had a box of chomps to snack on. It was great. I saw some chomps at Costco, rolled a clip. Wow, I love chomps. And they actually were delicious. I ate like four or five of them while I was at the lake. My brother's a real health nut, and he was already buying chomps before we were even sponsored by him. What's your favorite flavor? Me personally, I like the jalapeno. I'm, I'm a bit of a spicy boy. 
so I like some spice in my life. We've been working with a lot of brands lately and Tromps is definitely one of the ones we want to keep working with. So if Tromps is the kind of stuff you want to see and you want to support the channel, help us out by going to our link in the description. Oh man, that made me hungry. Anyways, back to the handles. I'm using black walnut and bakote. To cut them down, I'll use my least favorite machine, the table saw. This thing terrifies me. Even though it can stop within milliseconds and save me from cutting off my finger, it can still fling things at me at supersonic speeds. Once I'm done changing my overalls, I'll start sanding the wood into the basic handle shape. I printed off this outline, and now I just need to spend an hour working it down because I don't have a bandsaw. Oh yeah, I have a water jet. That's not going anywhere. Beautiful, that's why we love Bacote. Oh, I forgot to do this one slower, so it's a little more rough, because this is a harder wood. Then I'll take those back to the belt sander and get the general shape roughed out. I'll start by going for a smooth look with these handles, then halfway through, decide to go for a nice chamfered edge. Everyone loves a nice chamfered edge. Just ask Tim Apple. Okay, actually that looks bad, so I'm going to go back to smooth. I switched to a higher grit sandpaper and went over the whole surface one time to get it nice and smooth. Back in Rocktown, it's time to cut these into a knife shape and get them close to the final shape. Was that a Destiny 2 reference? It's already slightly knife shaped, so I'm thinking we put the point on this end and the handle on this end. For this little guy, I'm thinking we split it in half. That'll get us closer to the knife shape we're going for, but it'll also give us a second chance in case we mess up. Cause something tells me this granite is not going to be fun to work with. Perfect. Which one's the better option? This one looks a little flatter. This one's kind of angled, so it's not perfectly straight. So let's use this one. I like the profile of it. Got our nice little mountain range there. I already explained this, but allow me to reiterate. This step is really annoying and time consuming. Because it was taking so long, I made a bit of a bozo move that will come back to bite me later. Let's hope this doesn't completely ruin the knife because that would really suck to start over. Remember how I said this was a stupid idea? Oh no, oh no. Huh, huh, huh. Well, here are each of the pieces. I can't decide if I want to try to glue it all together or completely start over. All right, I don't want to deal with that right now. So back to the granite knife. If I keep this nice and straight, bring in the water jet head at a slight angle. Boop and I go along here, oh, and I keep it close. That should give it the same angle, even though this is a curved knife. So let's see what happens. How did the blade turn out though? Okay, that is usable. I really like the shape we have going on here. So I'm gonna glue it and hope it's not a nightmare. I learned this one back in Nam. The old super glue trick. No visible seam. Yeah. Cracks, I hardly know her. I actually really like the rock pattern that's on this side rather than the cut finish. So maybe there's a way I can preserve that and just come in on this side with the water jet and give it a nice edge. If there's anything I know, it's edging. Okay. If I knew what kind of stone this was, I could look up its properties and know how to work with it. But that's not an option. Before I mount the blade to the handle, I want to sharpen the rocks a little so I don't have to do it all in one sitting later. Once again, optimizing my life for better retention. I'll use these diamond plated sharpening stones to sharpen the blades. At $140, these diamond sharpening stones don't come cheap, but as they say, you get what you pay for, and every other sharpening method simply wouldn't work on granite. Then I'll cut out some of the handle material to mount the knife to it. I don't have a lot of material to work with here, so I'll do a very bad job gluing the two together and just be really careful with it while I'm testing it. Surely this won't cause any problems later. After that, I'll spray it with clear coat because that's a whole lot funner than actually polishing the wood, and especially the rock blade. Okay, we're on to the final sharpening of our rock blade knife here. Okay, it's taking some material off. You can see the dust piling up in the water. I'm going really slow and steady here because I don't want the rock to chip off or break in any way. Whew. Yeah, that's sharp. I say that's ready. Come get a look at this. You can actually see here a nice little beveled edge. Cue epic montage. These are 
are a little rough around the edges, but they actually have a really cool look to them. The natural stone edge turned out great, and they're fairly thin, which should help with slicing. I think these should work well. Let's get testing. Ooh. Good initial results. Ooh, yeah, that's dreamy. And that's a rock? This is a rock, let's see here. How thin can we go? Ooh, yeah. I'm going real slow here, trying to get it as thin as possible. Nice and easy. Look at that. You ever seen a rock cut a tomato paper thin? Didn't think so. I don't even think that our kitchen knives could do that. They're so dull. I know. Let's see how the granite fares. Wasn't really able to sharpen it, but I'm hoping it kind of has some natural serrations here. Hoping maybe those can kind of saw through it. We all know serrated knives are better for cutting tomatoes, so it might just be better. All right. First test with the granite. <laughs> it's sawing its way through. It's certainly not as clean as the other rock, but it works surprisingly well even. Like, look at how thick that blade is and how well it works. Like, you could throw this on a hamburger, call it a day. Let's see how thin we can go. Probably not super thin. Certainly can't go as thin as the mystery rock, but it still works fairly well. Now the carrot test is the true test of the sharpness of a knife. Let's see how they fare. Okay, let's see how thin we can go. Nice and easy. Not pushing too hard, wow. Look at that. Now that is paper thin. Let's try out the granite knife. We're gonna use our patented sawing motion here. Nobody else in the business knows about this. It's not a very clean cut. It's pretty rough, but it worked. Let's try it on the thicker end. <laughs> oh! Uh, it would seem that uh, the granite knife has broken. Was that the actual rock that broke? Yeah, look, it was a little thin right there. I wasn't putting that much pressure on it, so that just goes to show you how weak granite is. Just like all the people who say mean comments about me. Pioneers used to ride these babies for miles. 